Hi there, I hope you're well. In this video, it is my pleasure to introduce the latest version of the 10 minute workshop, Loose 10 in Jig, the Loose 10 in Jig Plus. If you don't know the story, I did a video about a DIY Loose 10 in Jig almost a year ago, and it took about six months to wrestle a flat pack CNC version of that jig into production, which went on sale just after Christmas last year. And the Plus is the latest version of that jig. At its heart, the Loose 10 in Jig Plus has the same functionality of the regular jig, which remains on sale, but the Plus is bigger and it does more. The wings on the sides make clamping easier, especially useful for the folks using larger routers. And there's a guide on the jig as well as to the clamp safe area. The row of guard bush holes allows for boring holes on 32mm centres, perfect for shelf pins for example, but rather than listen to me prattle on about it, I'm just going to use the jig to put a basic camera at a simple carcass together and I'll fill you in with some of the details as we go. The jig comes flat packed in two parts that need to be joined together to make an L shape and while you could just screw it together I'd recommend using the threaded inserts and machine screws that are included with the jigs as it makes them easy to flat pack again for storage. There is a complete assembly guide and accompanying video by the way and the links to that on the back of the postcard included in every jig. I fitted an 18mm guide bush to the router and centred it with a mandrel, then fitted a 5mm spiral upcut bit. It helps with dust extraction and there's one included in the optional starter kit, more on that later. And I've set the plunge depth using the notch on the end of the jig. I've marked out on the cabinet where I want the loose tenons to go. And I'll simply be referencing off the pins that are included with the jig. For the centre mortises, I'll just be lining up the centre line on the jig against a pencil mark. I'm starting with the wider mortises on the inside face of the cabinet. The larger face of the jig has wider slots. and just letting the reference pin set the position against the workpiece edge. Couple of clamps and I can cut the first mortise. And then the second. and then the mid mortise, just using the pencil mark. Then I can repeat the process on the other end of the side and complete the other cabinet side in the same way. Top and base next and I'm using the small face of the jig to cut a tight mortise on the edges. Again just using the reference pins against the edge to give me the position. Now when it comes to the shelf pins there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Although shelf pins are typically referred to as 5mm, the majority of ones that I've come across are actually 4.76mm or 3 16 of an inch. So if you're using the same 5mm loose tenon bit for the shelf pin holes, you'll likely find that the shelf pins are all a little bit on the wobbly side. Because of this I recommend using a 4.76mm bit for the shelf pin holes and there's one included in the starter pack plus along with a 5mm bit and a small pack of 5 by 30 mil dominoes. If you want the full row of shelf pin holes from the top to the bottom of the cabinet, you can simply reference the jig off one end, line up the side of the jig with the side of the cabinet to get the perfect 37 mm spacing, and start boring the holes. When you run out of jig you can just flip it over and use one of the reference pins in the jig to extend the row of holes. Mm -hmm. 
be aware that the L shape of the jig will restrict the number of holes you can bore at any time and breaking the jig down into two parts really does help with this. A less kitchen cabinet alternative is to use a centre hole with one either side and this is easily done by lining up the centre line against a pencil mark or an existing hole as I am here and using the jig against a fence or batten to keep the position consistent. And yes, I really should have clamped that down. And for the shelf pin holes on the other side of the cabinet, you obviously need to reference off the same edge. It's not looking so bad, it's all the routing, all the machining done. Uh, I'm going to slap this together with some glue and some 5x30 dominoes while I do that. Uh, I'm just going to answer some of the obvious questions that might have occurred to you along the way. Why 5x30 dominoes? Well, Festool don't make a 6x30. 30 mil dominoes are great to use because it's the same 15mm plunge depth for both the face and edge mortises in 18mm material. Festool makes it really easy to change the plunge depth on the domino, so using, say, a 6x40 mil domino, you can switch between a 15mm plunge on the face and a 25mm plunge on the edge, but even so, I've managed to get it wrong enough times that I just switched to using 5x30s, and I've built thousands of carcasses this way without any issues at all. It's also much harder to switch between plunge depths with a router. You'd have to preset it on the turret and even then you may not have enough plunge depth on your router, especially if you're using one of the smaller palm routers. Will the jig work on thinner stock? Well, yes, although the jig is set up for 18mm thick material, you can use it on 15 or 12mm stock by using shims or packers on the inside face. Again though, you may run into niggles with the dominoes and plunge depth on smaller routers. For 12mm material, you really want a consistent 10 and 10mm plunge on the face and edge of the board, so if you're using a 5x30mm domino, you either need a safe way to cut the domino down to 20mm, small bandsaw for example, or you need to switch to using 4x20mm dominoes, which presents other niggles like getting a long enough 4mm upcut bit to fit your collet. Will it work in thicker stock? Well, yes, but the dominoes won't be centred. On the Festool Domino, one of the main gripes initially was the lack of an 18mm setting on the fence. Most folks, including myself, just used the 20mm setting, and it worked just fine with a slightly offset domino, so you'll have no issues with 22 or 25mm boards. If you start getting up to thicker stock, like 32mm or more, then maybe consider the double domino approach, where you put one in from each face. So that's not looking too bad, it's all clamped up together very nicely and gone together very well, nice and tight on the joints, on the edges, which is what you want, and the shelf sits nice and flat with no hint of any sort of wobble in there. So I think we can call that a success. The Loose Synergy Plus is available now in my Etsy store and it's priced at £85. 
and is complete with the reference pins and the threaded inserts and the machine screws. There's a starter pack plus as well at £25 that includes both a 5mm solid carbide spiral upcut bit for dominoes and a 4.76mm solid carbide bit for shelf pins together with a small pack of 5x30mm dominoes to get you started and there's an optional trend 18mm guide bush as well. The trend fitting is a version of the old Elu standard which is pretty common but if you have a router that uses different fitting then I may be able to put you in touch with a, a team of 3D printing experts who can probably make an 18mm guide bush for your router at a very reasonable price. I've been using one of those in my Festool OF1010 router here today and I'll put a link to that one in the video description down below. Now it might be worth pointing out that the plus jig doesn't replace anything. The original 10 minute workshop loose 10 jig remains on sale in my Etsy store and it is a terrific introduction to the world of loose 10 and cabinetry but the plus jig embraces and extends that with additional functions that many folks putting their first cabinets together will find extremely useful. I wish I had a jig like this available when I was morphing from general handyman work into custom cabinetry 20 years ago. Uh, I'm going to call this one done though. Thanks ever so much for taking a look. Uh, thank you as always to my amazing channel members over at Patreon and YouTube memberships whose contributions and conversations have really helped shape these two products. And of course, a special thank you to everybody on the 10 Minute Workshop testing team who had early hands on with the Plus Jig in particular and the original Jig too, of course, uh, for all the feedback that they provided that that has helped me tremendously to make the best possible product that I can. But that's it for this one. Uh, thanks so much for taking a look and I'll see you next time.